Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about new exciting research about the beautiful neighbor that we have right here, planet Venus. And specifically research that analyzed the upper atmosphere of Venus, discovering something really exciting about it. It looks like the upper atmosphere of Venus has a very high potential to support photosynthetic life. In other words, theoretically at least, it's quite possible for various photosynthetic bacteria and photosynthetic microorganisms to potentially survive in the atmosphere of this somewhat hostile planet. But before we talk about the study and before we talk more about the details of the analysis, it's sort of important to understand that a lot of this discussion about Venus and potential life on Venus more or less started just over a year ago. Specifically in September of 2020, when the scientific team reported the potential detection of the molecule known as phosphine during the analysis of the atmosphere of this planet. And phosphine is a really intriguing molecule, mostly because of where it's usually created. So despite being toxic, it's normally created in one of two ways, either through extreme conditions inside volcanoes, or various bacteria that do not depend on oxygen, so anaerobic bacteria, normally found in some extreme conditions on the planet, although quite a lot of it is also produced by various bacteria inside swamps and even bacteria living inside intestines. But then quite a lot of studies started to come out arguing this discovery. Some studies implied that there was nothing discovered in this particular study and that there were some errors in the actual analysis, while other studies were arguing that phosphine was discovered as far back as the early pioneer atmospheric missions from back in the 70s. And so this question of whether there is phosphine on Venus and whether this phosphine, if it exists, is produced by some sort of life, is not really a question we can answer yet. But because of this particular discovery, quite a lot of really heated debates and extremely interesting studies came out in the last year or so, essentially investigating the idea of potential life in the Venusian atmosphere. And notice that we're really only talking about the atmosphere, mostly because the surface itself is believed to be just a little bit too extreme for any life to survive here. The temperatures of nearly 500 degrees Celsius, the atmospheric pressures of almost 100 atmospheres, and the extreme acidity of the atmosphere as well. But if we go higher up in the atmosphere of Venus, we'll actually find certain areas where the temperature, the pressure, and a lot of other conditions actually sort of resemble the atmospheric pressure and temperature right here on planet Earth. But all of this happens approximately 50 to 70 kilometers up in the air. And so because of this, many different studies have tried to investigate if life truly could exist here. And since last year's discovery, a lot of these studies have started to sort of take this a little bit more seriously, including the most recent study arguing for the possibility of photosynthetic life here. So first of all, what exactly did they find? So the scientists behind the study you can find in the description started their analysis by looking at the amount of sunlight that penetrates the Venusian clouds and reaches certain altitudes. A lot of this data is available from the decades of Venera missions, the Soviet missions to Venus, that were able to analyze the Venusian atmosphere while the probes descended and tried to land on Venus itself. And using this data, they determined that the total illumination or the total irradiance of Venusian middle and lower clouds is extremely similar in terms of quality and quantity of light that the actual surface of Earth receives as well. And interestingly, about 87% of the UV light that would be damaging to various organisms does not even reach these regions. It sort of gets trapped and reflected by some of the upper clouds in Venusian atmosphere. But the type of light that is normally used for photosynthesis overall is extremely similar to what we have on the surface of planet Earth. Specifically, two very well-known pigments known as bacterial chlorophyll and phycocyanin would be extremely successful if they were to exist in these regions. These are normally the same pigments used by various bacteria and algae to produce oxygen here on planet Earth. And so, at least in terms of the sunlight, it looks like these regions of Venusian atmosphere where many scientists have speculated life could exist are almost perfect for photosynthetic life. However, for photosynthesis, you also need things like water. And at least one very recent paper has already suggested that, well, it's very likely that Venusian atmosphere just does not have enough water, and here we're talking about atmospheric water, to support any kind of bacterial life. And so does this mean that there's no way life could exist here? Well, not according to the authors from this very recent paper. 
they actually argue about something else. They argue that some of our analysis of Venusian atmosphere might have not been correct from the beginning. The early estimates of Venusian atmosphere from some of the early exploration missions suggested that there is a lot of sulfuric acid, approximately 75% in these regions where we expect these perfect conditions for bacterial life. But the recent paper argues that some of these observations could also be produced by something that's not sulfuric acid. For example, certain components that are neutralizing, such as ammonium bisulfate. And what this implies is that, for all we know, the actual atmospheric composition is not as acidic and not as filled with sulfuric acid as we initially believed. In other words, it implies that water could be present in these parts of the Venusian atmosphere. And there could be a lot less acidity as well, both of which would suggest the very high chance for life to survive here. Which currently makes Venusian atmosphere the most exciting region for the exobiology and for astrobiology as well. In other words, we have an extremely, extremely high chance of finding some sort of bacterial life in the atmosphere of the nearest planet to us. Moreover, they also established that the amount of acidity and water activity in these regions of Venusian atmosphere are quite acceptable for various types of microbes that normally reside here on planet Earth, making these Venusian atmospheric regions quite habitable. And this also brings us to this other mystery discovered by one of the Japanese probes a few years ago. Time and time again, recent studies, including some of the recent observations from the Japanese Akatsuki probe, have been discovering these unusual patches that seem to absorb UV light in the atmosphere of Venus. They're known as the unknown UV absorbers. And this is something that we knew about even since the early 60s. Back then, even Carl Sagan proposed that these unusual UV absorbers could potentially be caused by some sort of an unusual bacterial life. And so for many decades now, the scientists have been speculating that some sort of an unusual bacterial life could definitely exist in the atmosphere of this beautiful planet. With this recent study even going as far as saying that, well, we seem to have almost perfect photosynthetic conditions, assuming that we were wrong about the amount of acid present in the atmosphere. And so from the perspective of astrobiology, Venus right now is the prime candidate. On the one hand, there are a lot of studies arguing against potential life here. On the other hand, more and more studies come out explaining why life could definitely exist here. And luckily for us, we have several missions planned in the next decade that will hopefully either discover something here or potentially discover nothing, putting all of this to rest. For now, we have to rely on hypothetical studies and theoretical propositions in order to determine if anything can actually live here. Interestingly enough, because of this study, we can now also be pretty certain that a hypothetical colony in the atmosphere of Venus would very likely have very Earth-like conditions, assuming we can somehow stay afloat and find a way to produce a lot of water in the Venusian atmosphere, where the pressure and temperature is extremely similar to the surface of planet Earth. And so, at least in theory, we could hypothetically create some sort of a flying cloud city or some sort of a flying colony that would be able to successfully function in the atmosphere of this beautiful planet. But I guess on that note, well, that's all I wanted to mention in this particular video. We'll definitely come back and talk more about Venus and a lot of discoveries about the potential life or actual discoveries from this beautiful planet. But until we discover something else, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. I'm sure there will be a lot more announcements and a lot more discussions in regards to the potential life here, but I think at this point we all want to know the actual concrete results. Well, anyway, on that note, check out the relevant links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.